Welcome to the Rue Dits and Loz podcast, kept hot by Reem. You can listen to this podcast anywhere you like, even in the shower. Reem, Australia's favourite hot water. Adelaide. Adelaide. The greatest city in the world. It's time to wake up with the team born and bred right here in South Australia. The unofficial Mayor of Adelaide, AFL legend and Yabby Peeling record holder, Mark Rusciuto. The former squash champ and current B-grade golf champ, Chris Didmar. And the award-winning radio host, who's the dumbest smart person you know, Laura O'Callaghan. Triple M Breakfast with Rue, Dits and Loss. Oh, how good. It's already Tuesday morning. <laughs> how is everyone? <laughs> how good a long weekend. Yeah. How was Wakery, Rue? Very good. It was cold, but a uh, very productive weekend. Did you go to the Wakery Bakery? Uh, no, I didn't go oh. there. My brother was chef for the entire weekend and right. did an awesome job. And we kids smashed the motorbikes and did a bit of work and had a bit of fun. It was smashed them, as in you meant used them a lot. Yes, okay. they did. Mm. Yeah, okay. Loz, uh, what did you get up to? Not a lot. I mean, I had a, a dress-up party on the Saturday night uh, for Jahan's birthday, which was a lot of fun. I saw a photo. Who, who were you dressed 30. as? I went as um, Drew Barrymore in Charlie's Angels. Pretty niche costume, but uh, the people there understood. It was yeah. like an if-you-know-you-know you know sort of joke yeah. with my friends. Right. Um, blonde wig, a lot of glitter, um, a lot of... A lot of tequila, I'm not going to lie. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of tequila. I didn't see Drew have that in the movie, but yeah. anyway. Well, yeah. look, I mean, let's just say that I, I left this morning to go to work and yeah. I realised that my car wasn't there because it's I left it at my friend's house on Saturday oh, okay. and I just hadn't noticed. Oh, <laughs> where's your car, dude? <laughs> okay. Loz is the new Dusty Martin. Yeah. Dude, where's my car? Dude, where's, where's your car? Where's your car, dude? Today? Quiet, which is good. I loved it. Uh, didn't do much at all. I loved doing things. Friday night, homemade I don't believe pizzas. You no, it's true. Quiet. Pizzas on the web. It was mm. beautiful. Just stay home. Watched a bit of footy. How do you do uh, your pizzas? Had a, um, no, I just threw them together, made them up. And, uh, In the oven? Well, you get a base. Yeah, bought the bases. And then what, you put your own toppings Chopped up all our own toppings. Yeah, it was great. But nice. anyway, but um, yesterday, I'll tell you about this later. Yesterday, you leave though, the gas on? Shocking. I, haven't, I don't think I've left the gas on. <laughs> right. Shocking day yesterday. I uh, thought we'd put together some stuff from Bunnings. You know, go and buy the oh. flat pack. God, is that just... <laughs> for the DIY. For oh, it How was do you horrible. go with the Allen key? Nah, it was horrible. Got blisters. Anyway, I want to yeah. hear more about no, this, guys. One thing I did, I had to put a bet on uh, on Saturday. Went into the Lockleys Hotel, got a bit of feedback. Grant from the Lockley said, I know what's in Loz's wheelie bin. Does he? Ruse tips. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that is a good call. Cool. Yeah, he couldn't know, eh? Did it, how did that tip go? Seriously. Nah, no good. I'm, scr- I'm out. No good. You're I done? am out. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't get near it. It's trouble. <laughs> 104.7 Triple M. Hello, Adelaide. No one knows Adelaide like these guys. Triple M Breakfast with Rue Dits and Lies. Overnight news. Well, they've probably seen a little bit in the news about a bird flu that's been going around. They've detected it at a fifth uh, egg farm in the regional Victoria, and they've had to destroy and kill over 500,000 chooks Holy as a result. That's a big number. That is a lot of chooks. Uh, so much so that Coles have put a limit on the amount of eggs you can buy. You've got a two carton limit per um, person. So, uh, yeah, they're saying there's enough eggs out there, but it will take a while to mm. rebuild up the stock. Um, other supermarkets haven't put a limit on it at all, but, yeah, a bit of a, um, bit of a bad patch for chook farmers in the Victorian... Bush. I'm, I'm off eggs at the moment. Why? What do you it, mean off eggs? I don't know what it is about egg and chicken. It's, I've spoken to people who agree chicken with Chicken or the egg? Or the no. Egg chicken. <laughs> if I eat an egg that's a bit too eggy, mm. oh, it no. throws me off eggs for a while. Right. Do you what, know what I mean? What's an egg that's too oh, eggy? It just, yeah. it's got like this. What's an egg that's too oh, eggy? No, it's yeah. got this sort of, it's almost tastes like a chicken coop. You can almost, oh, oh, like, what? there's something about it's too poultry. And it's the same with chicken. Sometimes chicken's a bit too chicken-y. Really? And you can just taste the chicken. Oh, Tone down what? the chicken flavour, please. Oh, on that chicken. No, 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 no. 04 triple eight five one zero four seven. You can have 10 to the chicken shop, have a chicken egg. Yeah, I'll have a chicken, please. A little less chicken flavour, if I could. <laughs> Oh four triple eight five one zero four seven. If you've ever had an egg that's a bit too eggy. What? <laughs> Jeez. Usually I try and keep the full freak stuff off air, but no. Yeah. Phones are lighting up. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, shut yeah. up, maybe. Yeah. Oh, God. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe that's part of the egg flu thing. That maybe it is. When they've got flu, they might make it a bit too eggy. eggy. Right. Hey, people are handing in their cats and dogs at the moment. The RSPCA have got the no more pet sign up. They are chock-a-block because 
people are moving houses and losing their rentals mm. or just can't afford to uh, pay for their pets. I mean, everyone bought a bloody dog in COVID, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. So many people went out and paid way too much for an animal. Oh, my friends, um, yeah. Just as a bit of, have a bit of support in COVID, which is understandable because... Everyone Lonely, was locked up for if, you're a, if you're a household on a very, very tight budget, you're living sort of week to week or whatever and you're doing hard, all of a sudden, you know, injections for your pets or, you know, vet bills, mm. we go to the Teeth. supermarket, you, you're weekly, buy the dog food yeah. for seven days and a big bag of biscuits. And the guilt if you're not getting it's them a, the top it's end It's bloody stuff. expensive. It yeah. really is. It adds yeah, to your bill. That, 30 years ago, they were absolute luxury having yeah. a pet. Weren't they? Or if you got one, you never paid hardly anything for it. No, that's yeah. right. And now it's very common: thousand, two thousand, four thousand, oh, six yeah. thousand, eight thousand. Dogs are very expensive for a bloody yeah. well, big ones. Little yeah. ones are a bit more affordable, and cats are probably now. More speaking affordable. of which, cost of living. Something happened to us yesterday. Uh, that you never worry about these things until it happens to you. Mm. I always hear about prices going up. Um, Jackie said, "Want a coffee?" We're out doing the Bunnings thing, going mm. to buy you know some stuff to put you on a coffee. Stop by this cafe. Came back. She was white. I said, what's wrong? $7.50. <gasps> Normal, regular size coffee. Oh, I could not believe that. Tell like, normally, normally, don't you pay $4.50 or uh, you'd $5? Five very normal. $5? Seven yeah. And then I said, I tweeted, I said, well. is a lot. I said, well, it's public holiday. So they're clearly are loading on it. That's why no one's open. Isn't that expensive for a coffee? Mm. Well, the, the shop, the, the person that served it was <clears> probably getting paid 40 bucks an hour. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand why, but. It's it's a shock. It's though. crazy though. We won't, we can't sustain that. No, nah. you know we we know about beer prices, wine prices. If you went into a pub, yeah. and anything prices. Yeah, it's uh, ah, it's getting out of control. Hey, uh, here's one, Loz. Uh, that I thought you'd be interested in just to finish on. Uh, Japan's fertility rate was dropped. <laughs> Uh, they're not bonking in Japan. <laughs> Here's one for interested. you, Loz. Yeah. Japan's fertility. No, but I know you know about these things because it's a dating app. How's this? <laughs> the government, the government has put together a dating app. Normally, these are just a the couple of young people ew. getting together. The government is basically the government no, dating app. app. That'll, 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 dating app, and it's called marriage hunting. Ew. You know, I they want like the that. Japanese government want people to Heap get together. Straight politicians. Uh, put together an app. It's very wang wang and foony, isn't it? It is. You know, like... "Eh." Well, there's no success there. No, well... They're not good at it. No, you don't want the government setting you up. It's just like you don't want your parents setting you up. That's right. That's You're spot on. Leave us alone, Mum and Dad. That's gross. G'day, it's Tex Walker from the Crows. Come on. Tex. Oh, good morning, Tex, on this Tuesday morning. Dits, how are you, Loz? Good, good. Tex, really? how are you? Now, uh, this morning's going to be a little bit different, and I'll tell you, I'm going to include Rue in this segment with you, Tex, because oh, uh, well, on. because no, but a lot's been said and written since last week's loss to Richmond, and it involve, involves, all, involves all of you and the club, really. Yeah. Yep. The club's been under the microscope. Uh, you can call it the blowtorch, if you like. First mm. up, are you going to play this week? Is your back okay? Oh, we got a main session on Wednesday, so I've got to get through that. To yeah. play um, Saturday night. You look like you're walking, all right? Yeah, feeling good. I had a run around yesterday, and it's pulled up pretty well today. So yep. we'll just see how. I've, I haven't done any like contest work and all mm. of that stuff, so change of direction. So we'll do that Wednesday and see how we go. Are you confident? <clears throat> you think you'll play? Yeah, I'm pretty confident that I'll play. All right, yep. uh, Isaac Rankin. Will he be fit? Yep, he'll be right. So he'll play. Yep. Yeah. All right. Did um, he train flat out on? Friday or? Uh, it was either Friday or Saturday they had a session, yes. Okay, so yeah. had a what did he do? Refresh me? Hamstring. Hamstring. Oh, God, there's been so many different ones. Mm. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nick Murray is an important player for you. He's played a couple of weeks in the SRNFL. Would he be ready to come back in? He'll be a massive chance to play. Yeah, all right. So this leads to my question. Um, and I always say this to your text. I'm not trying to make excuses for you or anybody. I'm just trying to present the facts. But no matter who we barrack for, if all of our star players are out, it's hard to win. Is that, has um, that, bit, so all the, you know, specs fans complaining at the moment, is that the issue? It's a good lead in, Dits, because I, I was thinking about when I was coming in this morning, how do we talk about where we're at? And I, I, I think it's simple, <clears throat> excuse me, the fact that if you take seven or eight of your starting 18 out of your team, mm-hmm. and we've had that in myself, Ranks, um, Phil Thorpe, Murray, Murray Miller, yep. Crouch is out, Worrell's out. And if you're a Crows fan driving along, you're probably going, oh, here they go. Here's a, here's a, um, excuses. It, it's the facts. Mm. We've had long-term injuries. We've had a few of our key players out. So it does leave a massive hole game day. However, it just creates a great opportunity to, for our young guys to step up. Um, and on the weekend, we, 
we were nowhere near the level. Um, and to give you a bit of a stat, I think it was about 30 or 40 games difference in us to Richmond on the weekend. So that's nearly two years of experience. Well, we were younger of, than Richmond. We were younger than Richmond mm. on top of mm. um, those key players out. Mm. So um, I, I knew at the start of the year that if, if we stayed healthy, um, would would give finals a bit of a um, shake-up. Um, we've I've been unfortunate with some key guys going down, and, and there have been long-term injuries as well. Um, but as I said, it's we're going to find out about our younger younger group, um, who can and who can't, the second half of the year. I want to focus on two real good wins this year. When you beat Port Adelaide in the showdown, and when you beat Carlton away from home, two, I would say two very, very good wins. Yeah. Um, we could debate that. but So what's been the difference between those efforts and the efforts, say, against Hawthorne, against Richmond? Oh, a little bit of personnel, but, um, yeah, I, oh, I don't know. It's probably we were a bit healthier at the time. We are playing a little bit better footy. Obviously, we're not playing as good footy at the moment, and we're getting challenged by opposition, and we're not able to stop that. Like, on the weekend in the third quarter, um, we weren't able to – Stop there. I think they had 20 inside 50s, which is pretty astronomical um, number for a quarter in football. So, yeah, I just think <clears throat> we've just got to be a little bit patient with, with our younger guys and hopefully over the next sort of two to three, four weeks, we'll start to get some of these guys back and you can see what sort of footy we can play. Rue, you copped it last week a fair bit. Yep. Uh, it's fair <clears throat> to say. And you know the stuff I'm talking about. Um <laughs> is it an overreaction from fans? And I'll go back again to the injuries, but you, you, you know, things like, oh, the, the bloke at the top has to go and the recruiting's been wrong and, you know, draft selections have been bad. I mean, yeah. how do you respond to the stuff that you've heard and read? I agree with what Tech said. I think at the start of the year, more people than not thought we'd uh, challenge for finals. And I was one of them. I thought we could play finals this year after getting as close as we did last year. Um, but we, we've had a combination of... Uh, lack of form for some players and also injuries. And then when you combine that, you also get a lack of confidence as well. I still think our list is absolutely good enough to play finals if it's fully fit or close to fully fit, but you can't have that many numbers. And we've had a combination of that. Also in the first four games, I'm a, I was a bit confused about why we weren't playing as well as what we were after playing two good games at the start of the year. Tex did get injured. And Phil Thorpe was out and Murray was out, but we just couldn't quite move the ball like we wanted to and we couldn't get that connection between midfield and forward. I thought the next two months after that was really good footy and we just didn't quite, you know, lost a kick to Essendon, lost a kick to Collingwood in Melbourne. There was some, we won a game by kick against Carlton. We played well against, uh, we drew with Brisbane. So we're mixing it with the best sides for two months. The last couple of weeks haven't been good enough. And, you know, everyone's entitled to be frustrated about that from supporters to absolutely everyone. It's not good enough. Um, but we need to turn that around. We need to get some players back. We need to train hard on the track. We need to get back into form. We need to get that connection between the mids and forwards better, and it'll turn around quick. Uh, at the start of the year, just to repeat, I think, and most people thought we are good enough to play finals. We haven't uh, lived up to that, and we have to find out why. All right, so you don't, uh, and you're not at the moment doubting yourself in any way, Rue, from all of the criticism Look, and you everything you've heard. Da- you always, you always doubt um, things. When, you, when you're a player, you doubt yourself. When you're a coach, you doubt yourself. When you're an administrator, you doubt yourself. But you have to go back to and know and back yourself in for what you've done in the past and what you know. Um, and I'm no different to that. So I'm fine. I know where where we're at right now. I know we're at the start of the year and I know what we've got to continue to do over the next two years to add to uh, the footy club to be where we want to be and that's right up the top of the list uh, competing for grand finals. All right, we'll or move on in a moment. Competing for premierships. What's but we've, got, we've just got to get better. We've got to continually get better whether that be you know on the training track, players, whatever it is. You've just got to get better. We're, we've been, we haven't been playing finals since 2017 so we have to get better. Yep. What's Simple happened since the other night, since the Richmond game, meetings or, I don't want to use the word crisis or crisis no, meetings, no. but has anything different happened Nothing, since the other no, night? No, 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 no. Carry on as usual? Oh, I'm sure there'd be more phone calls going, okay, what, like, why? What's mm. trying to get answers? Yep. Um, but we've just been business as usual. You review it a little bit harder than you probably would, did, to be honest. But apart from that, mate, it's business as usual. And we've, we've got one more game going into the bye and we... We want this season to 
be one that we look back at and go, okay, we, we learnt a lot, but we've just got to continually get better and try and knock off a few of these good sides in, at the back end of the year. For all your steel supplies, it has to be Centurion Steel. Centurion.com.au G'day, it's Tex Walker from the Crows. Come on. Tex. Yeah, Tex is in the studio with us. And Rue, of course, after a pretty tough few days at the football club for the Crows. Um, Tex, I want to ask you about the coach. How's he going at the moment, Matty Nix? He's going all right. He's going all Coaching right. Coaching well. He, he said he had a nice little weekend with his eldest son chasing some Pokemon. Great. Um, <laughs> try, with his hat and sunnies on, he said I didn't want to deal with the, the public. So, no, nah, he's, he's going all right. He's obviously Did he catch them all? I, I didn't ask that because I'm not uh-huh. 100% sure on how you do it, but you, I think it's an app and you've got to chase okay. them yeah, or something. Pokemon so. go, yeah, Pokemon Go, yeah. While he was doing Pokemon, he would have been thinking, mm. Isaac Heaney. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come in handy. <laughs> Take on Gordon, right. Brody Grundy. My next but, question. No, but is he, is he, uh, he's definitely uh, the man for the job. You think he's oh, coaching yeah. well. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I've, got, I've got full faith in him. And, um, no, nah, we'll, we'll be fine. He's um, obviously feeling the pinch a little bit, as you, as human nature does. You a little bit of pressure, you start to feel a little bit. But he's he's um, staying positive and um, keeping the joint very upbeat. All right. Sydney Swans, Heaney, Warner, Goulden, Grundy, their midfield. We're going to have to be on, yeah. And your midfield's been criticised heavily. So that, that's the area you're going to have to play really well in this week. Yeah, obviously we're going to have to uh, come up with some ideas on how we try and stop their midfield um, and beat them, um, which I'm sure VB and, and Dawson, the boys, will be talking about um, at the moment. So it's going to be a great um, contest for us, great challenge for our midfield. Um, so one that we're looking forward to. And, you know, they're in great form. They're on the top of the ladder. And we're going to have to uh, try and do a couple of uh, things to beat them. What, but, laxatives um, in the coffee or something? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. on, like, something sinister what are, about you. What are you doing Saturday? Well, let's get into the hotel room. What rooms. am I doing Saturday? I'll be there. No, like sad day. You, you got any free oh, time? Oh, during the day, like, you, you want me to sneak around or... with a balaclava <laughs> and drop some maybe oils into some drinks? <laughs> no, you're not allowed to do that. No. Dark, How's no. Loz's boyfriend going? Tex. filthy. Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> still got, a bit, this still is, got the hots for him. This is. Uh, let me tell you, last week when you guys bullied me like we were in year yeah. five. Yeah. I got more messages about that than I've ever See? had, even about the wheelie bin. What, the, they reckon it's a good idea? No, they were like, what are you doing? You're a predator. He's like 21. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I've never even met the man. And you know what? You've got to learn a few tricks every There's just nothing you can say places. in those situations. Cradle snatcher. Yeah. That's, Year listen. five, you're giving us far too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like Dits when Wyler comes on, he gets a little bit low. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gets a little Shall giggles. And... Right, right, just notes. to finish on this uh, heavy topic, anything you'd say to the fans listening right now? What For the rest of the season, as a club, uh, what what would you say to your supporter base? Uh, stay on board and support the club that you love. Um, the club are doing everything they can to get better as quick as they can. They'll be training hard. They'll be reviewing as fast as they can. Uh, and they're as hell-bent as anyone to get uh, back to where they should be. So uh, stay on board and support the club. All right. And yourself, uh, long-term at the club. You're not wavering at all in, in your oh, role? I, or... I know the goal we've got to do. We've got to get better. We're trying to attract people to the football club. We're trying to get our current players better as well. And we're trying to get the best out of the players that we've got at the moment. So we need to get our form better. And as as we get players back, uh, we'll get better as well. So Fair enough. I'm all very, right. very... Loz, you got something to ask, Tex? How's your caravan going? You just bought one, caravan. didn't you? We're about to pick it up this uh, this Friday. So, really? Uh, we got a few days off next week, so yeah. we're... P- please wish me luck, dear. Are you nervous? Oh. This Are you nervous about Russell Coit written it on all over or? it? Well, I'm not too nervous because I've reversed trails, reversed boats, jet skis, mm. but Ellie, for some reason, just keeps, like... Dropping hints that she's shitting herself. Yeah, yeah. That I'll be driving. I'm like, just chill out and like relax. Like, we'll be allowed, fine. Are you allowed to be in the caravan while you're driving? No, no, no way. I'll no. I've Jesus definitely not Christ. had a nap back there or anything. I'm at all. I'll give you two tips. Yeah. Caused me too much grief. You do the outside of the van and let Ellie do the inside. That's, well, that's the first much, strong yep. tip. All right, otherwise you'll get divorced. And <laughs> when you do drive out the caravan for the first time, your heart rate will go up just because it's different <laughs> and, you, and you'll go, well, what confidence. am I doing here? But you'll be fine. Absolutely right. fine. Well, so I've got to drive then. 
I reckon that'd be a good idea. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine if Philly drives. No, we'll pick it up. We'll pick it up Friday, and then we're we're going away for a couple of days. So yeah, right uh, go okay. wider around the first corner than we'd usually mm. would in the car. Right, eh? All right, right, then. Good advice. We'll, uh, Dad joke to leave us with. Well, I t- I, once I bought this wooden car. It had a wooden engine, wooden doors, wooden wheels, wooden seats, and then I put the wooden key in the wooden, wooden. In- ignition. <laughs> But it wouldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I Hi. saw that come about three minutes yeah. ago. <laughs> oh, my right, God. That back sorry, right sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. Good joke, no. Good get, that, get that back right, big fella, and yeah, uh, get out there and help him on Saturday night. to be honest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's rude, <laughs> it's lost. <laughs> and Tex Wargall, thanks to Centurion Steel, Triple M. So I was on, uh, shock horror, I was on Instagram, and I came across a podcast with these two girls and they were talking about, she goes, you won't believe this, but humans can tell the difference between the sound of hot water and cold water being poured into a glass. And I went, mm. this is bull dust. Right. And the girl talking to her said, this is bull dust. And she went, I'm going to show you and I bet you you'll know. So I'm going to play the two sounds to yep. you guys yep. and I just want to see if you can know. So this is right. number one. With, with water number one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Water number two. Water number two. That's okay. a cold one. Ooh. What do you think? Second yeah, one's cold. Second one. Second Sorry, one's can cold. I hear number one again, please? Yeah. Water number one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number two. Water number two. Yep, I agree. Okay. Yeah. First agree. one's hot, second one's yeah. cold? Yep, yep. Correct. Yeah. Wow. What, isn't that weird? <laughs> Where I knew immediately and everyone in the comments was like, holy shit. I knew too. Did they pour? Did you see him actually doing it? Did yeah. they pour it into the same glass? Uh, yeah, it was two. They were all matching mugs, oh. so it was all completely like the same cups, the same pouring devices. Yeah, I don't know why, but... but you can just hear it, can't you? And then someone in the comments said, "I'll never forget. I was doing the dishes, and my mum called out from the other room. You're going to have to re- refill the sink because the water's not hot enough. She could hear that the water wasn't hot enough from the way it was <laughs> oh, pouring in. That's just because probably break, the pipes went. Yeah. But yeah, so there you go out there if you're playing along. I think and there's a noise, right. isn't there? When you pour your kettle into a coffee or, you know, you got, yeah. you know it, some, I don't know, there is there's a different noise. There's something about there's it. That's why I asked if it's the cups are different because a glass, yeah. you know, a glass of water. Yeah, no, they were the longer, same. They were all exactly yeah. the same. But I think that water, when it's cold, sounds almost a bit crinkly or chinky yeah. or something like. It's like clanks against the, and yeah. the hot water kind of blah, 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 blah. Mm, there, there you go. go. Right. We have a skill we didn't realise. Life changing. <laughs> I am no handyman, it's fair to say. You uh, don't say. Made the great mistake of yesterday heading down to Bunnings. It doesn't, whether it's IKEA or Bunnings, you know, I, I don't know why I went down this why, road. Yeah, why did you go but down I this thought, road? I thought I can do this. So we bought uh, a big bookcase to put together uh, and also bought a Kasha high pressure, you know. What do you call it? Pressure, pressure hose. Pressure hose. Cleaner. Pressure yeah. cleaner. Yeah. yeah. Started with that. Even that, the instructions. Uh, ridiculous. There are no instructions. We ended up Googling instructions. That's we ended up watching you on YouTube. you don't need any with pressure cleaners. All you no, do you is do. plug it into the wall right. and put the bloody hose in. You come around and try and put this thing together. I've got one. It's outrageous. Oh. <laughs> outrageous. There's two well, I... things you do to a bloody pressure cleaner. <laughs> I nearly drop kick the bloody thing. And power. That's oh. all you no, do. The, pl- the, the, extent, the cords won't go together. I couldn't even plug them it in. It just goes click. No, it doesn't. I put it in and then the cord fell straight out. I did this a hundred times, twisting it, turning it. Oh, you got to twist it. Well, how did you get it working in the end? Well, I'll get to that. I'll tell you in a minute. Anyway, the bookcase, the bookcase, this is, you called it early. It's called called Divorce in a Box. Yeah, if you want a a quick divorce. uh, So bookshelves, you had to line all these things up. You know, they have these plugs. They're not screws, but plugs. Like they call them dowels or something. I just want to jump in. Right. There's two types of people here too. What? Read the instructions mm. or don't read the instructions. Right. Which one are you? No, there's no instructions. They're <laughs> pictures. Oh. <laughs> no instructions. Yeah. No. What, for a flat pack? You've got to look at a picture and go, oh, that's okay. That's what you do. Mm. Doesn't it have one, step two, step three, step yeah, four? Yeah, it's impossible to follow. Anyway, what I did, Peter, my neighbour two doors down, ended up ringing Peter, who's a handyman, and I didn't want to. I was Because it's Monday holiday, I thought, let the poor bloke have his day mm. off. And I can do this. My God. Anyway, the funniest thing you I had to see. I think we need to get paid on. I lined up all the you know shelves with the dowels in them. Mm. And as soon as I walked away from it, it all concertina falling over yeah. like dominoes, <laughs> right? Domino. Yeah. When that happened the first time, we laughed our heads off. Yeah. When it happened the fifth time, yeah. I picked it up and threw it at the wall. <laughs> yeah. 
And of course, Jackie said, well, that's not going to really put it together, is it? Which I didn't need to be that told. That wasn't in the instructions. No, I didn't God, need to be told that. I knew that. I so attracted to you in that Anyway, moment. so, and I, it took a handyman who's been doing this for 50 years to come down. And he, to be fair, he knocked it together in about five minutes. Yeah. But yeah. it shouldn't be that hard. These no, things should not be that should tough. be lighting a fire. It's ridiculous. I think I think they, uh, I'm with you, dear. sometimes they're harder than you think they're going to be. And it's actually a bit of a joke that they're sort of self put together things because they're quite elaborate. <clears throat> the hardest one is when you're a single woman, sorry, <clears throat> and you've got to put your own bed together. Yeah. Because it, yeah, you don't want that to fall to bits. No. 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 <laughs> but when, <laughs> when you open the package, yeah. when you open the package and it just says, not a one person job. Oh, and you're like, yeah. well, guess what? There's yeah. no one else bloody oh, no. here. He left. Why don't so they, I'm going to have to should do be it on the on outside own. of the box when you buy it. Yeah, yeah. Not for single people. losers. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It can be tough, but you've got to combine logic with sometimes really weird instructions with photos that make no sense. It's good to try these things, but I reckon a lot, oh. I'm a bit in your. I can't. I've it got was the horrible patience for putting things together. It was the worst afternoon. I've never put anything together and then at the end not had at least two screws left over that yeah, were so definitely you look over important. Go, what are those bits over there? I know. I'm like, oh, that should be there. Looks and important, and le- <clears throat> especially if you've got a. a Stubborn people or aggressive people, mm. it's just not good. Oh, yeah. Put that on the together. outside of the box. Not good for stubborn people. Yeah, because <laughs> if I do that, I wouldn't have bought the bloody thing. I guarantee it'll yeah. end up in divorce. Yeah, 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 yeah. On Triple M Breakfast with Rue Dits and Lars. Did you learn something? What did we learn? What did we learn? Uh, you heard uh, how rabbits can breed quickly. They, you know. Mm. Very, very fast. Yes. Uh, well, we're sitting around the fire, and one of the girls uh, around the fire reckoned that rabbits are at their most fertile and ready to get pregnant again 14 minutes after they give birth. That's really? Why, wow. That's why they, when you hear the expression, minutes. breed like rabbits. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's exactly right or not, mm. but they definitely can get pregnant a month after mm. uh, having, a, having little bunnies. Uh, they, that sounds yeah, very quickly. Quick. Can humans do it? I think it. Uh, well, my dad's an Irish twin, I think. So you can have, uh, which means that you're born in the same year as your is that right? sibling. So that's within a couple of months. Isn't yeah. It? So it's nine months, obviously, of gestation, and then yeah. so twelve months in total. So okay. if you get, you can get pregnant. Actually, there is a thing. You are very fertile in the first couple of months, but usually people aren't ready doing it because it's too ready, painful. Yeah. Yeah. So if it does happen sometimes, because mm. you don't know when the egg's dropping or anything like that, okay. normally you have a schedule that you sort of know. Right. Yeah. So breeding like rabbits. Yeah. 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 Keen for it straight mm. up. Mm. Mm. What I learned was that my cousin's a nurse and we were talking about death and because um, obviously when you're not in a, a medical profession, you probably don't think about how much death they see. They just see a lot yeah, of death and yeah. um, it would be quite confronting. I've never even seen a dead body in my life. And she's seen hundreds You've of them. You've never seen a dead body? No, I've never seen a dead body ever. Well, I've hmm. never been to an open casket funeral and I've never seen someone die. So I feel like it would be quite a confronting experience. She says that it still affects her, obviously. It's quite clinical, but it still affects her. But she said that what they do, and this is the sort of thing that nurses do, pretty much in all hospitals, not every single one of them, but when someone passes away, they open a window in the room and to let their spirit leave. Really? Yeah. No matter whether you're religious or not, it's yeah. just a... The done thing. It's thing. just the done thing just in case so that they don't get trapped in there. And right. Ghosts can go through walls and things, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of just like a, I don't know, it's like a ceremonial Symbolic thing. thing. But it's, it's interesting because it's such a medical clinical environment that mm. there's still a tiny bit of room for that spiritual thing that okay. they do. But yeah, that's a, a that's a common practice. Yeah, thank you. All right. That's what People come in and good. say a little prayer. And, that's good. Yeah. Um, over the weekend, a friend of mine, Richie Amato, fellow here in Adelaide, runs a company called Enaven, went round to his house for dinner. And his lovely wife, Nikki, is Hungarian. And now, you know, we butcher the English language here mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, our alphabet's got 26 letters. Yeah. Uh, Hungarian alphabet, 44 letters. I thought, wow. Imagine if we had to work with 44? all of those. 44? Wow. Yeah. What's unique about Hungarian? Uh, mm-hmm. This is what I learned. There are two languages, I think, in the world that are unique. So, you know, English, French, German, we yeah. have Spanish. We're all related to Latin. Derivatives, Derivatives yeah. of Latin. And there are a lot of languages that are derivatives of Arabic. and mm-hmm. they're, So they're related. Hungarian, it's on its own. 
What just do you made, mean? They made it up totally themselves. It's not Slavic not, or not, not related to anything at all. Let's have a here's an example. Mondom, hogy, hogy Pristina, akkor az első kérdés az, hogy, hogy az, hogy az hol van. És amikor, hogy, hogy az Koszovó... That's, a, that's an example. I listen to Rudits and Laws every morning. The whole yeah. thing you are talking about is double Dutch now. So what you're saying, how many languages are from... Latin yeah. and Greek. Quite a few. Or, a almost lot. All, all I, English, yeah. German, no idea about Italian, yeah. everything. There's another one from... too, Finnish. Finnish, Finnish is, on is totally on its own. Finnish really? and Hungarian are the, and not related to anything. How do you even know that? Did you learn, did you learn that at school? Oh, when I travelled a bit, I suppose. I, mm. I, I knew when I went to Finland, I thought this, is, this doesn't sound like anything else I've ever heard. German and English to me have so many similarities. Yeah, they do. Because I learnt German in school. Hmm. And there's so many overlaps. Yeah. I think it's probably one of the easiest languages to learn if you speak English. Yeah, but German it, is. Yeah, but did German English that's... is impossible to learn because we are so stupid. English is. We don't make mm. any sense. No. Our we have so many rules that are inconsistent that it's a bit like AFL. Honestly, like <laughs> it's just like it work, sometimes <laughs> it word goes like this and sometimes it doesn't. But that's on right. this day it doesn't. And blah, what blah, about blah. all of the words that are? The same, but they mean different things. Oh yeah, two, two, two and two. Yeah, yeah, things like that. And we just have other we languages just know. don't do that. And the, yeah. Yeah. how It'd many be... versions of two are there? There's two, two going one, two somewhere. Two, two O's and two Two's T-W-O. in the number. Yeah, yeah. 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 There you go. Mm. But just finally, there, there uh, there. Hungarian forty-four letters. Nothing on the Cambodian language. How many? Seventy-two letters oh, in the alphabet. <laughs> they're, the win- they're the winners this morning, Cambodia. Holy well, Cambodia. It's <laughs> right. It's a loss. Triple M. Triple M's Rumour Mill, Adelaide's most listened to segment. Hear it every day at 7.40 on Rue, Dits and Loz. Uh, today's rumour is a little bit more of a story, something that happened to us last week. Um, and it's a bit of a shame and it's no one's fault and I'm not by any means, uh, in any way am I having a go at the Adelaide City Council, but it's just a shame. This Wednesday marks the 60th anniversary of the Beatles being oh. in Adelaide and standing on the balcony of the Adelaide Town Hall. Wow. And Loz, as you know, we try to plan ahead. How do we mark it? And we thought, let's reenact. Let's go and have a party, do our breakfast show on the Town Hall balcony. Yeah. And we got knocked back. We can't because it's being totally renovated. And I was I there thought, last week. It is. It's a construction site on the outside. I know. And, and we and thought, everything. because do you know, Loz, at the time, they say that one in two South Australians yeah. turned up. Half our population, yeah. and the Beatles even what? said it was their biggest crowd anywhere in the world yeah. that they'd ever. Pulled. How many people were there? Uh, they're saying, well, the estimates are five hundred thousand, or actually, it's less than that. Back then, it was, I think it was probably three fifty something like that. Yeah. Because we had a hundred thousand at the grand after the grand yeah. final, yeah. and it was chock a block the whole way yeah. up King William That's right. Street. Yeah. But anyway, it's just a shame that, uh, and they weren't three hundred thousand. They're saying, yeah, yeah. So they planned obviously a while ago to renovate. And it's just a shame that with this anniversary, we couldn't have our party. Mm. So as I say, a bit of a rumour, a bit of a story, but we tried in vain to do something down there and uh, we can't. Well, you, so. No one here was went and saw it. What, what year was it? Was 64. Not... I was born in 64. Oh, sorry. So there it's... you go. Well, um, you forget because they're kind of time stamped in your head. You forget how long ago yeah, they actually were yeah, at their peak. Yeah. It was a really long time ago. But anyway, all I'm saying is it's a shame. And like I said, this isn't blaming anybody or pointing the finger, but yeah. we could have done a big celebration, not only us, but a lot of people. We could have gone down to King William Street and celebrated uh, what was a great event, one of the biggest events in Adelaide. Mm. Get on the YouTube dits and go and reminisce. There. Yeah, mm. I will. Oh, the good news is it's already Tuesday morning. It's a short week this week. It'll be your tea. It is um, Tuesday. How yeah. was your weekend, Loz? Yeah, look, it was very good. Saturday night had a. This is how good it was. Saturday night had a a party. Yeah. Um, in in Unley Park, and this morning I got up to go to work, and I my driveway was empty, and mm-hmm. I went, "Oh my god, where's my car? It's mm-hmm. been stolen." Mm-hmm. The Suzuki Vitara. <laughs> and then I remembered that I left it at my mate's house on Saturday. <laughs> and today's Tuesday. <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea. Sure, <laughs> have you not left your house on Saturday? <laughs> no, I have not. And oh. I haven't been out the front. No, I went out the back to water the, well, I didn't water the garden. It was a bit rainy. But went out there to sort of clean up some leaves and do a bit of this and a bit of that. But um, not out the front, no. Sunday right. and Monday, you never stepped out the front Didn't door. even look out the window. <laughs> didn't even look out the window. Did you get out of your jammies? Into different ones, yeah. <laughs> Lord, yeah. you must have been oh. mighty hungover. Well, I'm a slug, mate. That's my natural habitat. I'm just oh. slugging around. 
Uh, Lol's got the Uber into work this morning. Yeah, that's, I did. I had to get an Uber. <laughs> that was a bit, yeah. Uh, good work. We've got the Voice of the Suburbs coming up this hour as well. And the wheelie bin. Someone's going to have a chance to have a guess about what is in Loz's wheelie bin. It's $11,000. I told you earlier, uh, I was at the Lockleys Hotel quickly on Saturday. Grant from the Lockley says, I know what's in Loz's wheelie bin. Mm. Ruse tips. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Good place for him. Yeah. Incorrect. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, horribly oh, out of yeah. <laughs> Now is the time, though. It's finally here. Give us a call. one triple three five three. If you reckon you know what's in Loz's wheelie bin, it's all thanks to Eckerman, South Australia's largest and most trusted team of conveyances. Uh, give us a call. Uh, Eckermans.com.au. Head there as well. It's Rude, it's a Loz for you Tuesday. Triple M. Triple M. It's time for your favourite game. Loz's Wheelie Bin of Fortune. All right. Um, so the clues so far about what is in my wheelie bin. Do you want to hear them? Yeah. Unoccupied, Japan, 2022 floods, chocolate, three and up, as in ages, and number one. Mm-hmm. And right now, how much money is in there? Eleven thousand Eleven thousand dollars to be won. Yeah. Goodness. And you're going right to give another me. clue tomorrow yep. if Wednesday's it doesn't go Pluto. off uh, ten or one or right now. Yep. And look, every incorrect guess adds a hundred dollars to the tally. So you know, yep. it's just getting higher and higher. It is and getting higher. higher. What did we start at? Five grand. Five, Five. grand. All right, so it's more than doubled already. Let's go to Mount Barker. G'day, Jesse. Hey guys, how you going? You're pretty confident. You know what's in Loz's wheelie bin. Well, I hope so. <laughs> right. I've been listening to the clues and it's been getting closer to what I'm thinking. So, All right. Yep. You weren't at the Loz's party on Saturday night where she might have let it slip when I she'd had a heap of sh- shots not. of tequila. I did not let it no, slip. No, no, no. Okay. No, I didn't. Okay. Just right. for legal reasons, I did uh, not. What do you think it is, Jesse? Okay, so I think it's a, um, an empty bottle of Coke. Okay. Empty, empty bottle, bottle of, of Coke. Coke. Why do you think Tell that? Us. Okay, so... Um, the clue, so uh, empty, unoccupied. Mm-hmm. Um, Japan's flag is red and white. That's the colour of the Coke label. Um, chocolate, Coke's brown. Of course, not the chocolate colour. Yeah. Um, ages three and up. I don't think anyone should be giving Coke <laughs> yeah. younger than that age. Um, yeah, maybe even, two, yeah. yeah uh, 2022 flood. So there was a flood in India in 2022 where Coke... Um, created a natural disaster relief for them. Okay. Um, what's the other clue? I forgot the other number one, number one. Oh, number one. Coke's the number one drink in the world. Right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Number one drink Gee. in the world. Okay. This is good. Well, soft wow. drink. Soft drink. I yes. should say soft drink. Yeah. 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 Wow. All right. Okay. Get the drum roll. Drum roll. Too bad, so sad. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> no, but yes, such hey. good thinking and well done on all of that. You've really, look, you know, you've really brought it all back to that thing, but unfortunately it is not an empty bottle of Coke. All right. 10 yeah. o'clock this morning, $11,100. Sorry, Jesse. Sorry, Jesse. $11,100 oh, is what it sits at now, which is insane. We'll play it again uh, at 10 o'clock this morning. It's triple N. Loz has had a big weekend. Well, I went to a costume party on Saturday night and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> had a blonde wig on, had a full jumpsuit on. Who did it was, you go as? I went as Drew Barrymore in Charlie's Angels. It's right. a specific scene when they're race car drivers. It's yeah. a very niche costume. Yeah. What was the theme? Uh, it, iconic moment, moments in movies and TV. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there were some great ones. Um, the guy whose birthday it was, he went as the guy in Alien where the alien comes out of the stomach. Oh, and he had the whole, uh, he had it shooting out of him, and it was great. There were some really, really, really good ones. Um, I got home, and as you do when you get home from a dress up party, you just want to get the wig off. Oh, you just yeah. want to get complete. So, wig threw on the ground, just jumped straight into bed, like completely, <laughs> completely just like. Just Close get it away off. from the yeah. front door. Yeah. It just make sure the door's locked, get pass out, sort of thing. Woke up in the middle of the night needing the loo. Ran to the toilet and on the way to, out of my room, I stacked it, absolutely <laughs> stacked it. Did a Sean Wren, hyperextended my knee and I felt it pop. And I went, oh, God, what have I done? And I looked down and I'd slipped on my wig. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So when you've I'd come really home, hit the deck. you've yeah. just thrown everything thrown one on bit at a time on yeah. the floor. Were you in slow motion, motion, even though you probably had a couple of drinks? Yeah, were you yeah. In, was the slip in slow motion? Yeah, you gotta, you've got so time you to really think about it, don't you? Slip- How am I going to land? Yeah, I slipped on my wig, <laughs> and I sort of hit my bum, and then I got up and limped to the toilet, and then I 
came back in the room, picked the wig up and threw it and just went, you bloody bastard, and threw it across the room. And then I woke up in the morning and the wig was sort of half on the plant in my corner, just like, and it like sort of looked like a person. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what is that? And then I remembered again that I'd slipped on the wig and then thrown it. Too good. But yeah, probably up there with some one of the dumber ways I've hurt myself or uh, just some more ridiculous ways I've injured myself. Can happen. Slipping on a wig. Yeah, sure you can. You hurt yourself, Dits, doing anything? Oh, I told you a few months ago that I had the slippery dip. When in, going down my little granddaughter off the slippery dip. Down <laughs> yeah. there. Oh, and I flew exciting. through the air and landed on my bum there. Yeah. That day. yeah. I was holding you had her, her in your lap. Well, I had both hands around her, so I couldn't, you know, and soften you, the blow. Exactly. And as I was flying through the air, I thought, no, nah, this is going to end real bad. And Straight it did. On, the, the, yeah. on the tushy. Yeah. It's a tailbone, isn't it? It's oh. sort of, and it wins you because it goes all yeah. the way up your back. That's so what I was very Slipping is nasty. Yeah. Mm. Because I slipped the other day. I was, thank God no one was watching <laughs> because <laughs> down at where we go out of the car park, I was walking out the back and there was a water must have been leaking out of the drain there and it come across the concrete and I just went. Yeah. And then in that moment there you're in midair and you're just going, yeah. how am I going to land yeah, I here? <laughs> and I fell on the ground and I looked around to see if anyone was watching. <laughs> no one there. Uh, but bloody hell. And I've slipped on carpet coming down the stairs. I've yeah. still got a dent in my glute Yeah, from, it'll be te- probably nearly eight years ago, You're ten joking. years ago. No, my ass, it split, yeah. must have split the muscle. You know yeah. when you, yeah. with your bicep, you get yeah. on, I've got that on my glute, mm. on my bum. On your wow. gluteus maximus. From landing on a step. On a step? <laughs> yeah. The step actually split I slipped split on the your... step. You know when you slip right on the end and you go, Phew! And then land on me. And there's nothing for it. Or you can just mm. go, you can just rub it. Ah, and you rub it. There's nothing you nah, can do about you it. You just got to cop it. Uh, talking about dumb injuries because Loz on the weekend slipped on a wig. Yeah. Came home from a fancy dress party. <laughs> Through the Had wig to get up and go to the toilet during the night and slipped over on her wig. And oh, it was a truly no. strange sort of, because when you don't know what's going on, yeah. you're like, what was that? And then mm. I touched it and it was human hair. And I was like, what is happening? Did you happening? go like a big gut too, like a loud one? Totally. Like totally smashed into mm. the ground, to- whoa, like really, really ungraceful. Let's go to Modbury North. G'day, Sky. How did you hurt yourself? Hi, how are you going? Good, Sky. good, Sky. Um, my injury was around when I was ten years old, and I decided to stuck stick a grape up my nose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. and what happened? Um, it went so far past the bone, they had to stick a long wire up my nose oh. and roll it out. Oh, <laughs> no. what a doctor what? did, or? <laughs> Pardon? Did you get a doctor to do that or your mum and dad? Oh, definitely a doctor. Oh, cool. How big, how big was this grape? Oh, it was large. It was very big. Why, did you, was, um, it, why did you stick it up your nose? I have no idea. I was a very <laughs> curious little girl. Yeah, curious. Um, right. And regretted my decision. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good okay. on you, Scott. Hang there. Let's yeah. go to Mawson Lakes. G'day, Grant. How did you injure yourself? Yeah, g'day, guys. Uh, and- so probably late 90s, uh, I was on a five-week military exercise, and we, uh, halfway through, we stopped in at Mataranka Springs. Um, and as, the, as all the soldiers, about probably a 30 to 40 around the, uh, the hot springs, I went to do a bomb dive. Uh, as I went up in the air, I threw my shoulder out, came down in the water. What? Everybody's laughing, but I'm bopping up and down in the water in pain, and they're still laughing, think that I'm think that I'm fine and mucking around, but I'm actually drowning. You dislocated <laughs> your shoulder dislocated in thin shoulder. air. How? Yeah. Because oh, the way I just threw my arms up in the air, <laughs> right. it just oh, threw my God. left arm out. Okay. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Must have been a bit floppy. Very violent. Yeah. yeah. All right, Shona, Melrose Park. What happened to you, Shona? Um, when my nephew was about one... I decided to get into his little fold-out couch that all the kids have when they're little. Oh, yeah. cool, and those little couches. Yeah, Yeah, they are cool. And then when I got out, my knee went pop. And I, I said to my husband, did you hear that? That was my knee. Anyway, my knee was a bit sore and I carried on. And then I thought, no, I've got to go to the physio about this. Went to the physio. The physio said, no, your knee's fine. And I said, okay, well, when I squat, should my knee do this? And I squatted down and the whole left side of my right kneecap just went out to the left. Mm. And the physio was like, oh, my God. Mm. Yeah, you need to have surgery. Yeah. Oh, oh God. God. Right. What oh, was it? No. I did my meniscus. Oh, yeah. got Loz's boyfriend. Right. He did oh, his meniscus. That's didn't. right. Oh, yeah. Ellie, Elliot, Victor Lord. Harbour. What happened to you, Ellie? <laughs> I um, was racing my husband in Adelaide Airport where he started running down the escalator <laughs> and I was running down the stairs. Oh, no. 
slipped, oh, no. eight foot, hit my butt on about eight steps. No. <laughs> no. He laughed at me. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't even check that I was okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then when I got home, I had a look in the mirror and I had a bruise that went from my bum hole all the way up to my lower back. Oh, oh, no, they're not very oh. soft, those did escalators. You, did you do any permanent nah. damage or are you all right? Oh, I'm all right. Still silly enough to do it every time we go there. Yeah, you've got to do it. I mean, when someone challenges you exactly. to a race, you, what do you got to win? to the top. Yeah. Yeah, you have to win. Yeah. <laughs> Tex Walker joined us earlier this morning here in the studio. Uh, over the last few days, your club has really come under fire, Roo. Um, Is it all just about the number of injuries? If you take seven or eight of your starting 18 out of your team, mm-hmm. and we've had that in myself, Ranks, Phil Thorpe, Murray... Murray Miller, yep. Crouch is out, Worrell's out. And I, if you're a Crows fan driving along, you're probably going, oh, here they go. Here's a, here's a, um, excuses. It, it's the facts. Mm. We've had long-term injuries. We've had a few of our key players out. So it does leave a massive hole game day. I think it's a fair explanation. Well, and a little bit of form as well and a little bit of confidence the last couple of weeks. So uh, got to turn around. They're training hard and they're going to play Sydney this week. Mm. Uh, top of the table, Sydney. That'll be a great uh, matchup for them. All right. Will Tex and Isaac Rankin play? Oh, we got a main session on Wednesday, so I've got to get through that to yeah. play um, Saturday night. Feeling good. I had a run around yesterday and it's pulled up pretty well today. So. Yep. I haven't done any like contest work and all mm. of that stuff, so change of direction. So we'll do that Wednesday and see how we go. Are you confident? <clears throat> you think you'll play? Yeah, I'm pretty confident that I'll play. All right. Yep. Uh, Isaac Rankin, will he be fit? Yep, he'll be right. So he'll play? Yep. Also said Braden Cook looks like a good chance. Also said Nick Murray's played two games in SNFL and a fella be a good chance to come back as well. All right. Also asked Tex this morning about the coach. He's definitely uh, the man for the job. You think he's oh, coaching yeah. well? Yep. Yeah. No, nah, I've got I got full faith in him, and no, nah, we'll we'll be fine. He's um, obviously feeling the pinch a little bit as you as human nature does. You a little bit of pressure. You start to feel a little bit, but he's he's. Um, Staying positive and um, keeping the joint very upbeat. Yeah, text in earlier this morning. Now, Port Adelaide away to GWS on Sunday. Connor Rosie and Willie Rioli expected to play. Yeah, that's good for them. Uh, they only have Sam Powell Pepper out now, so Port can attack the second half of the year and really lock up that top four spot with a good win away against GWS, who are struggling a bit at the moment. One of those mm. sides like Melbourne and, up and down. Uh, Collingwood, and those central, uh, Geelong in the middle part of the ladder, just not winning at the moment. Mm. Interesting one, Rue, tonight, the Socceroos play Palestine in Perth in a World Cup qualifier. Amazing that Palestine can even put a team on the park. So uh, good luck. But is it like us when we had COVID, you need sport as a bit of a distraction on the side? (laughs) Rue, that is a real, real good question with what that part of the world's going through. I I really don't know. Amazing, isn't it? All right, Voice of the Suburbs is going to join us next. Yep, that's our look at sport. And speaking of sport, if you want some more hard-hitting analysis and a couple of laughs for your Tuesday, make sure you grab the bump. That'll be up on the Listener app. It's a podcast we record every Tuesday. You can search it. Find it by searching Rue Dits and Loz. Triple M. We're putting our ear to the ground, pounding the pavement, and finding out the real issues around Adelaide. Please welcome to Triple M Breakfast, the The Voice of of the the suburbs. Suburbs. Our ears and eyes out there in the burbs. Good morning. Good morning, team. How is everyone? Yeah, good, thanks, good. boys. Well, this week in the burbs, we've been we've been talking about kids' school projects. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I know. Look, guys, I am tired of being a school mum, and it's only term two of reception for me. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> oh, he's very. I know, and I'm sure there's lots of people eye rolling. But <laughs> this week, my son had to do his first ever class talk about an animal. So the first ever piece of project homework in our household. So oh, I was yeah. excited. Yeah. Now, Dits, do you remember doing this with uh, your boys back yeah, in the day? Yeah, but I actually remember my own days. I had nightmares. Of it. I'm having nightmares thinking mm. about this. <laughs> think, yeah, put it off and put it off and put it off. Yeah. And then last night you think, oh, my God, I've got to get that ready for tomorrow. Why they always want you to build something oh. out of <laughs> popsicle sticks or... 
paper exactly. mache. Eh? It's always building, you know, the erupting volcano oh, the and the remo- yeah. the moving solar system. Mm. And, yeah. you know, Bruno's dad's an engineer, so he <laughs> comes to school the next day with spinning and light up. Yeah. And, but anyway, mm. I was excited. So I thought I'll go to the news agency for my five-year-old. We got a big colored project cardboard, the glue sticks, the smaller size colored p- bits of paper mm. to add some interest and framing, you know, <laughs> the textures, the pencils, the glitter. And I was ready to do our project on the southern hairy-nosed wombat. (laughs) (laughs) Don't do it too good, though, because otherwise you set the bar too high. Oh, Rue, it was not good. Because when we started constructing it, my dear five-year-old was so excited, he just started drawing a wombat, no practising beforehand on a piece of paper, just bang. There it was, this hideous-looking thing that did not look like a wombat. Yeah, but that's what the teacher wants to see the kid do it. They don't want bloody (laughs) Mr. and Mrs. Brainiac parents to come up with it. Yeah, well... I saw Luca's project this week and it looked very bloody good. The koala was perfect. It even had fur on it. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. But then it got worse because I, we, we printed out some fun facts about wombats. And then my son Hit us started. With a couple. Well, he's going to do a Q&A today. Guys, do you know what shape wombats poos are? What are they? They're actually square. Isn't oh, that yeah. a well, you can't no, have to they put a are. square poo out of a round right. hole. <laughs> <laughs> have they got like one of those trays that you put the ice cubes in in the freezer? It Clean. comes out like an ice cube, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Come on. Got another one? <laughs> Did you know that this um, hairy nosed wombat can run up to 40 kilometres an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah I heard that. 40 Ks, that's insane. That's, that's they- shifting. Isn't that? They get very tired afterwards. But hey, so um, my little my son drew a car to you know show that they can go as fast as a car. Oh, the car whatever. looked horrible too, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. But then he just started sticking stuff all to the right hand side of the poster. Yeah. It was messy. It was chaotic, and I wanted it to interject, beautiful. but I had to stand back. So I texted my girlfriends, fellow voices of the suburbs, and mm. I thought, once he's asleep. Can I fix no. this? No. <laughs> no. Don't. It's not your Can, project. Well, the resounding answer was absolutely not. Step away from the poster and yeah. let it go. Put so it on to, the fridge and then when he's 18 or whatever, you can pull it out and show no. how bad he was. Voice, I know. Voice, so trust me, when I colour in colouring in books with my nieces and nephews, I purposely give them textures that don't work. <laughs> That one, darling, and Auntie Lizzie will colour it in the lines, and you just just don't mess it up. Oh my gosh, it's the same with painting when they mix all the colours together oh. and everything is brown. It's yeah. frustrating. But anyway, I'm trying to be a patient parent, and not let the aesthetics yeah. of the project get to me. Yeah. So today I have to walk into school holding this hideous <laughs> poster. Oh. But my son is so proud, and oh. that well, all that matters. That's what it, it is. What you else know? is happening in the burbs? Oh, guess what? I what? took your advice, Rue. Last what? week we were talking about boys trips. Mm. And I was a little bit salty with the fact my husband has been having so many bloody fishing and golf trips lately. Mm. So you'll be pleased to know I am off to Bali. So I cannot do this segment next week. Who's going to look after the little kids that have got to go to school and do projects? Oh, my gosh. My husband. But do you know all the prep I have to do to go away for four nights? Mm. I have to make sure the uniforms are sorted. I have to make sure the present for Luca is gift wrapped, card ready. Who's doing the lunch boxes? Oh, my parents have offered. (laughs) Oh, poor daddy might need some help while you're away. Of course he will, the poor bug. He's got to work and get the kids sorted. And so do I, Ruth. So do I normally. Thanks, We're going international with the birds. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. See ya. Uh, Time for us to go, Rudits and Lyles. Hey, uh, we mentioned Adelaide Town Hall earlier this morning because tomorrow's the 60th anniversary of when the Beatles were in town on the balcony at the Adelaide Town Hall. Yeah. Uh, They're having a party tomorrow. What What are they doing? Uh, There's a Beatles cover band playing from 12.30. Inside the Adelaide Town Hall. So uh, get down at lunchtime and have <laughs> some fun. Good. Yeah, that'll be a good lunch yeah. on a Wednesday. Yeah. Anyone working in town, head in there. What's your favourite Beatles song? Oh, I can't. There's no way I could narrow that down. Isn't there one that... Norwegian you... would. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, if anyone was at that uh, event 60 years ago at the Town Hall, give us a buzz on 13353 or you can text on 0488 We wouldn't mind having a chat to you. Yeah. Uh, at... 10 o'clock today, the wheelie bin 
guess will be eleven thousand one hundred dollars mm. at ten o'clock. And tomorrow, Loz is going to give a clue away yep. as well at yep. just after eight. All right, and tomorrow is also your last chance to win the opportunity to run out with the Crows v Sydney on Saturday night. Two more kids will get a chance to run out tomorrow. So get your gags ready for tomorrow, everyone. Yeah. Have a great day. See you then. Bye.